So now that we've introduced joint distributions, let's talk about some of the operations that we can apply to joint distributions and some of the properties that a joint distribution has. So first off, sometimes you get a joint distribution, but you don't want a joint distribution. You care about a single random variable. If that's the case, you can use a process called marginalization. And so marginalization for a discrete probability distribution means that you have to sum over the random variables that you don't care about. So for example, if you get a joint distribution in terms of x, y, and z, and you only care about x, to make y and z go away, you sum over all the possibilities for y and z to get your distribution only in terms of x. Now we're going to talk about discrete distributions because they're the most straightforward, but the alternative is also true for continuous distributions, but you have to do an integral, which we won't talk so much about. So here's an example of marginalization uh, that I borrowed from someone at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. Here we have a distribution over whether it's going to be sunny or cloudy, and what the temperature is going to be. If we write our joint distribution in something that looks like a 2 by 2 table, marginalization corresponds to either summing out over a row or summing out over a column to produce a new distribution over the random variable that we actually care about. Let's say that we want to marginalize out the weather. And this is the random variable that corresponds to if it is cloudy or sunny. In this case, we take each of the columns and add the two values for that column together. So if the temperature is hot, when it was hot, it could either be sunny or cloudy. We take those two numbers and we add them together. We get 0.15. We do the same thing for mild and cold weather. Now the original 2 by 3 table sum to 1, because it was a probability distribution, a joint probability distribution. And the new table that we produce, which is a 3 by 1 table, also sums to 1. It still is a probability distribution, but we've removed the random variable that we don't care about. We can do exactly the same thing by marginalizing out the temperature. And this corresponds to summing out each row, adding those numbers together. So we take the three values, for when it is sunny for each of the three temperatures. We add those together and we get 0.4. We do the same thing for cloudy and we get 0.6. And again, these two numbers sum to one. The original table was a probability distribution. The new table that we produce is also a probability distribution. So marginalization is a very important operation that we apply to joint probability distributions. But when we talk about joint probability distributions, one thing that we will talk about very often is whether they are independent or not. So independent, in terms of distributions, means that you can write the joint distribution as the product of the two marginal distributions. So often when we talk about flipping a coin twice, we talk about those as two separate random variables, and we say that those two random variables are independent the probability of getting two heads in a row is equal to the probability of getting a head on each of the two individual trials multiplied together. So it's 0.5 in each case, and so the probability of getting two heads is 1 fourth, or 0.25. But let's take a look at something that isn't independent. So let's say I have a big box of socks, and I draw a sock out of it. What color is that sock? And I do that once, I set it aside, and then I draw out another sock. Those two random variables are not independent. Because, let's say, that I had five black socks and one blue sock. And the first sock that I draw was the blue sock. And I put that down, and now I go to draw another sock. The probability of that being a blue sock is zero. If we remove all the blue socks with the outcome of the first random variable, there can be no more blue socks for the second random variable. And this is true regardless of the distribution of colors uh, in the box. These two outcomes are not independent. And so we can't model it as simply multiplying two probabilities together. Since this is a data science class, we won't just be doing these abstract mathematical examples. We'll be talking about things in the real world, and we'll need to make arguments about whether they're independent or not. And so oftentimes, it will be very obvious whether two things are independent. And so 
if I choose a random person from the university population and ask whether they use a Mac or a PC, or if I pick a random day and ask whether the green line is running on schedule, those two random variables are independent. They have nothing to do with each other. Similarly, if I choose a day and ask what is the snowfall in the Himalayas, or if I ask someone what's your favorite color, those two events have nothing to do with each other. They're going to be independent. There are other things that are very clearly not independent, and it would be foolish to model them as independent. So let's say that I'm trying to predict how you're going to vote, and I'm going to ask your party affiliation, and then I'm going to ask you whom are you going to vote for in the next election. If you tell me you're a Republican, you're more likely to vote for a Republican candidate. Similarly, if there's traffic on Route 1 is not independent of whether there is a home game being played at the University of Maryland. But then there are lots of cases in between. And so sometimes we make assumptions about independence even though those assumptions are not strictly justified. And so, for example, when we roll two die, they're not strictly independent. There are gravitational interactions between those two die, but they're so weak that it is just silly to try to model that. Let's say that we have a giant collection of dice and we roll all of them. If we choose any one of them compared to the entire sum, those two values are not independent, but it may be mathematically convenient for us to model them as if they were independent. In the real world, whether it is raining and the number of taxi cabs available is not independent, but we may choose to model them as being independent. Perhaps a less reasonable assumption is if it's raining and the amount of time it takes for me to hail a cab. We may model that as independent, but that's perhaps a less reasonable assumption to make. But we may choose to make that for computational or mathematical reasons. So one of the things that we'll talk about in this class is when it makes sense to make these mathematical assumptions and what it means for the rest of your model. Next, we'll talk about other operations that you can apply to probability distributions, 